And we start with concerns tonight as our kids get ready to head back to class. COVID's not the only illness on people's minds. There are also worries about serious diseases from the past that could pop up again. News 5 investigator Jonathan Walsh recently exposed a massive statewide problem with traditional vaccine rates for school-aged children. And just as we're starting school again, there's a new medical freedom uh, debate in Ohio that could change the state constitution. My kids have all their vaccines. Shelby Dietrich from Richfield just got her four-year-old daughter Stella a shot from the doctor's office on the day we caught up with them. I think vaccines are really important to help stop the spread of disease. The vast majority of medical professionals agree. It's really one of the modern miracles of science and it saved millions of lives across Ohio and, and worldwide. Dr. Hannah Lemmerman from Akron Children's Hospital has seen the low vaccine rates of some kindergartners. The same data we were first to tell you about months ago. Large percentages of kids in area schools and across the state are missing shots for things like measles, diphtheria, and whooping cough. Pediatric community and the scientific community needs to get back out there and reassure parents that vaccines are safe. That's why Akron Children's has a new campaign. Don't wait to vaccinate. And it may not be your well visit, but every time that you're here at the pediatrician's office is a great time to check and make sure your kid is up to date on their vaccines. Our reporting found state departments rely only on local school nurses, administrators, and school boards to enforce Ohio vaccination laws. Heidi Shaw is the president of the Ohio Association of School Nurses. But when you just um, have all these unfunded mandates and you don't staff accordingly for for what you're requiring, it can be really difficult on school districts. Heidi says there's also a definite need to help parents. What are the barriers of them actually getting this done? Is it information the parents just don't know? Medical leaders tell us it's more important now than ever after Ohio saw a measles outbreak in 2014 and a national measles outbreak in 2019. In that event, the CDC reports 89% of those cases were unvaccinated people. Plus, there's even a new case of polio in New York. We're starting to see these, you know, eradicated diseases come back. Melissa so Worvey Arnold from the American yeah, Academy of Pediatrics says supporters of vaccinations have to be louder than those against vaccines. I think people need to talk about the fact that they are vaccinated, um, that that's an expectation, a public health expectation. All of these efforts come at a time when a group in Ohio is pushing for a new state constitutional amendment. The group knows students have vaccine exemptions, but the proposed amendment calls for even wider medical freedom, individual rights to deny all medical mandates. We won't stop fighting. This is the right thing to do. Stephanie Stock is the president of the Ohio Advocates for Medical Freedom. They don't want employer-based medical rules. Disease exists. It has existed for centuries. We, uh, we as, a human, as a society, have survived prior to vaccines. We will continue to survive. The proposed amendment states people have the right to refuse any medical procedure, treatment, injection, vaccine, and so forth, and that no law, employer, entity shall require any person to receive treatment, injection, vaccine, and more. If passed by voters, Ohio would be the only state in the U.S. to have a medical freedom constitutional amendment. It keeps me up at night. It makes me incredibly worried. Do you feel... The science is there that proves that vaccines are effective? It's not up to me to make that decision. It's up to each individual person to make that decision. By taking it to this extreme, it really puts handcuffs on public health when there is a problem. I think what they're doing is dangerous. Any organization that thinks freedom is dangerous, I would like to question their patriotism, and maybe this isn't the right country for them. In the midst of these debates, Shelby tells us she'll continue to support vaccinations despite the Medical Freedom Group's efforts. When that starts to affect other people's health and other people's freedom to keep themselves healthy and safe, then, um, then I don't think that's right. I'm News 5 investigator Jonathan Walsh. And the Medical Freedom Group has until November to gather 400 42,000 valid signatures to put the proposed amendment on the main ballot. In the meantime, the medical community encourages all people to get scientifically backed vaccines that are safe and effective. Now from staffing shortages to supplies and inflation, there's a lot to think about as kids head back to class. And we've got you covered in the back to school section of the News 5 app.